Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce Alfred. Uh, before uh, I stop sharing screen, I I made a quick little kind of postery PDF, Alfred, for you, for you. I don't know if you're gonna like the. You sent me a lot of pictures. I I picked a graduation picture, nice, and nice. <laughs> I picked the uh, I picked the uh, and I thought that one was great uh, of you there. Nice. Nice one. You got a, there was a bunch of good portraits. What do you got going? You got like a, you got like, an eight, you got a professional photographer taking pictures of you. It's just me. It's all just you? A tripod. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Alfred graduated with, with us at mission in 2018. God, dude, it seems like so much longer than that. Seriously. Yeah, um, years. And he got his AA in graphic and web design. Now, Alfred was not just doing gra graphic and web. He wanted to do everything. Well, maybe not animation, I don't think. But yeah, that was like probably the only thing. Yeah. Yeah, he was doing, you know, he was doing the graphic and web stuff, but really interested also in video, which he's going to talk about today, too, and photography. So he took a ton of classes with us. Um, I, I think you probably took more than you needed to, probably. Yeah. You probably had more units than yep. you needed to. Um, and then, you know, now, and I didn't know that you were the marketing director. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Yes. Or for this uh, real estate title company, you can talk, and I, obviously you're going to talk about what all that yep. uh, entails. Um, and then I want you to obviously to talk kind of about your YouTube life and whatever. Um, okay. And, bait, and, you know, one of the main things why I wanted kind of Alfred to talk to you guys is he's in the exact place that many of you guys are at right now and are going to be. And Alfred decided not to go and transfer. There were some thoughts, right, Alfred, of transferring. Yep. And, and that's not to say that that may never happen because that could still happen. Right, exactly. But he decided to kind of jump right into doing business stuff. In fact, when you were a student with us, Alfred, you were already starting businesses. Yeah. I mean, you had a t-shirt company, you had an apparel company. I remember yep. because I helped you take photos for that. Yep. yep, that's in my slideshow, that's in my slideshow. Good, good, good. So he had an apparel company going, making shirts and, and, and all kinds of stuff, not just shirts, but I mean, all hats, shirt, everything. Right. And, um, did I get any of that gear? Did I? Wait. I think you you snagged a few shirts. I think I got it. Yeah, I think I got I a shirt. Did. Yeah. I have to go dig through my 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 closet. I think I got a shirt. I didn't get a hat. I you yeah. know, I love embroidery hats. Right, get right. Um, so anyway, so what I love is that that Alfred has tried not didn't do business a business degree, but really is trying to figure out on his own, but through met, probably mentoring, which we'll hear about, probably giving him people, a lot of people give him advice, um, how to kind of, you know, th that could be an avenue for many of you guys. This, this path that Alfred's taking, next week we'll see a path that Miriam took, but this path that Alfred's taking could be a path for you guys, right? Um, this could be, a, a, you know, not everybody follows the same way that they do things, right? Not everybody says, I'm going to transfer and do, you know, do it this way. So I want you to be aware there's not any one way to do this. And, and sometimes you're going to fail. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. Sometimes you're going to, you, you, know, you will make mistakes. It's yeah. a matter of how you recover from them. Exactly. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Alfred. I'm going to stop Wait. sharing up here. I'm going to, when you want to turn on, you can turn on your sharing anytime you want, um, right. but uh, I'll let you kind of start your jam. Ready? Screen share. All righty. Can you guys see my PowerPoint? Yes. All righty. Let's go back one slide. All righty, guys. What's going on? My name is Alfred Romero. Um, I just want to start it off here with like a, a quote that I like from a, another YouTuber. At a certain point, growth becomes less about creativity and more about consistency. Um, I wholeheartedly believe this. Uh, everybody can be creative at times, but it's just about who can do it the most consistently. Um, and you don't necessarily have to be maximum creativity. It's just about being there for everybody and showing up week after week and really proving that, you know, you can do what you do at your best. Um, I'm going to jump into a couple things here. I'm not going to talk to you guys about the pencil. I want to talk to you guys about what happens when you leave here. Um, that's you're going to leave. All, you're going to learn all that stuff in Curtis's class. I was having like flashbacks right now when he was talking to you guys about the Wacom tablets and stuff like that. And um, but yeah, that's kind of where I want to jump in with you guys. I'm going to go over a couple things here. I'm going to go over who I am or who am I. 
I'm going to tell you guys how to acquire your style or help you like discover it, put you on the right path. And I also want to teach you guys a couple of um, particular things about how to start a business, just in case you guys ever want to take that route. Um, you guys might be doing freelancing in the future. You guys might be doing, I don't know, clothing or whatever it may be. And I also want to show you guys other important things. Um, and yeah, we'll go over questions after that. Sound good to you guys? Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty, who am I? I'm, my name is Alfred Amaro. I am, I went to LA Mission College like you guys did. I was sitting in the same exact seat. You guys were literally just a few years ago. Um, I graduated in 2018. I think we already said that. And uh, I got my degree in web and graphic design with the help of Curtis. Curtis helped me out along the way. He has no idea how much he helped me. Uh, after I graduated, I went on to go uh, I jumped right into like a lot of illustrator stuff. I was doing a lot of logos for companies and helping people rebrand. Um, I have a very like simplistic approach. I only use like one or two colors. You can see that theme throughout uh, my designs. Very simplistic. Um, I did an AV Cornhole League out in Lancaster, California or Palmdale area. And also I did the Palmdale Book and Arts Festival. I helped them redesign their logos for one of the years. And Elk Tech International Laboratories. That was kind of another off one that I had done. I went on to help a recycling company redo their branding logo. I think the recycling company was actually one of the very first ones I did. So I, I wasn't actually that good at logo design at that point, but, and then I helped redo a sister company of a construction company, Patriot Empowerment Institute. They are local out here in San Diego um, and they work with like SDG and E. So I was really meeting a lot of big people through them. And in Silmar, I also redid a dispensary, the gas station. Um, this was probably, I think, one of my better designs, in my opinion, um, but yeah. And this is my, probably my biggest accomplishment, I guess you were to say. Out here in San Diego, there is a company called Massage Science. They have two locations, one in North Park, one in, San, in downtown. And they're opening up in like, I think, five hotels in the next couple months here. So they're really starting to take off. I met this girl, Ashley, when she was just uh, renting out one room to do massages. I established a really good connection with her and you're gonna see throughout the slideshow where I started to really help her improve her business. Cool, um, I did clothing. Again, I'm gonna just go over who I am super briefly. Uh, I did clothing along the way. Uh, I learned how to silk screen. Uh, this is where me and Curtis were talking about that a little bit earlier. Uh, with that, I need to take photo uh, product shots for my website and this is LA Mission College Studio. These are Curtis's lights and backdrop and all that green screen in the background. And also too, we have Curtis in the lower right hand corner right here actually helping me. I didn't even know how to really use a camera at that point. I think that was the 1DX Mark II. Um, so yeah, the, the product shots came out really great. From there, uh, because I learned how to use a camera, I went on to do a lot of photography. I liked a lot of like landscape photography. That was kind of like my thing. And then after that, I transitioned into a lot of portraits and a lot of film. And I think this is probably like one of my more favorite types of medium is just film portraits. Um, I like using the flash. I like, you know, having like a dark background almost, um, photos at night, so yeah. Now that I knew how to take photos, I went back to massage science and I was like, hey guys, I know how to take photos now. So if you let me into your massage rooms, I can definitely help you guys out to make your photos in your gallery better for your website. Um, so that was like a pretty big thing for me. Um, and yeah, helped them as well. I went on to do weddings. This is my friend Arlene. Again, it's all just about networking. She went on to start her own business called SB Line. I ended up doing the logo for her and then I got into like user uh, interface, I guess you would say, right, Curtis, UI. And so uh, she started her own, you know, hair accessory line. So that was pretty fun. Again, making websites. I was doing this for my clothing brand at the time um, in college, so. And then I jumped into video. Again, you could kind of see the massage science background this is actually my girlfriend. She now mas manages massage science. So I keep like a pretty far distance uh, from the company now, but I just like jump in where I can uh, to help them essentially. They're growing at like an extremely rapid race and it's crazy because now they're a multi-million dollar company. And it's really good to, you know, say that you've helped people along the ways like along the way like that because they want to see that reflect in, in their work or their business. I, I, I didn't want to play a video here because it's usually all laggy over Zoom, so. I just kept a photo. This is kind of my setup. I have a Sony a7 III. I have like a tilt to cage and a Andy Cine 4K monitor as well as 
a Rode NTG3 um, and a Zoom H6. And yeah, that's kind of what I work with now. This is me at Laura's title, uh, just kind of recording one of their board meetings. It looks like something that's like straight out of the office. I think it's so funny. So currently on the side, I have a YouTube channel. I have 2.5 subscribers and uh, it's called the Wave Gretzky Show. Wave Gretzky, I like hockey a lot, as you can tell. And uh, yeah, it's kind of my thing. I do a lot of DIY, how-to and design, graphic design and all that good stuff. I still sell merch on my website. I still link the people to YouTube, to my site. I'm still doing the same thing, making my own websites. I have my friends wearing it. I'm still designing. This was like a Halloween special and getting a lot of support. Um, again, more merch I wanted to show you guys. Like I said at the beginning of the slideshow, it becomes more about consistency rather than creativity. You just got to keep doing the same thing over and over and over and you'll see growth. Um, that's really what it's all about. And then my nephew wearing my merchandise. So it's pretty cool seeing like it just kind of expand and seeing other people support you and yeah. All right, at a certain point, it becomes less about creativity, becomes less about creativity and more about consistency. Um, how to acquire your style. This is probably where you guys are gonna like really start plugging it in in your own head as I'm talking about it. So if you could try and stay with me, try and stay with me here. So basically I see it as two ways. You can one, you can look at your five favorite artists, creators, um, painters, anything that you like. Um, and what do you like about each one? The second way you can accomplish this or start to be on the path to accomplish this is to tell me what you're not. And I'll explain both. So let's take an example. I wanna make a streetwear brand. You're like, okay, well, these are the five streetwear brands that I like. I like Supreme because I really like their font. It shows me that they're bold. It shows me that they're forward thinking, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I really like Stussy's Instagram. I like the lifestyle they portray. I like, you know, just the day-to-day -day postings that they do. I like the whole vibe and the visuals of it. So that's kind of what I wanna go for, cool. I like Carhartt because I like their designs. It's simplistic. It's a little logo here. It's on the arm. It's not too much. It's just very simplistic. I like Thrasher because I like the sweaters they use. They might use a Gildan. They might use Independent. And you're like, well, I don't know what it is, but I have to figure it out because that's the sweaters I want to use for my brand. And finally, I like Off-White because I like their website. So I really like the way I can check out. I really like the way I can you know, surf their site. I really like the way I can, I don't know, check out all the different products. And there you have your streetwear brand. So that's kind of just one way I like to think about things. And you could use this universally. You can use this for how to buy a car. You're like, well, I know I don't want something small, but I don't like trucks. It's just kind of give or take. You can rule out the yes by getting to the nose. And that's my second way. So getting to the yes by getting to the nose. So I'm a photographer, but I don't know what kind. Well, I know I don't like landscapes. So I must like having people or some type of subjects in the very front. Well, I know for sure I don't like black and white. Well, maybe I like color. That's probably my only option, right? And if you know you don't like digital, maybe you only like film cameras. Maybe you like the whole process of developing film, sending it out, getting it back and checking out what it looks like. And then you're like, hey, I don't really like doing the studio setups. Well, you might like being in the streets. You could be like a street photographer or you know, maybe a wedding photographer. It's all, you never know. Um, and I hate when people over edit their photos. Yeah, I hate the saturation, I hate the contrast. So maybe I'm just gonna edit my photos very minimally or maybe not at all. So maybe I might consider film portraits. Maybe I might consider film, I don't know, street photography. So it's, yeah, just different, th different ways of thinking about it. Are you guys good? Are you guys all good so far? Can I get like a thumbs up in the chat or something? Yes. I just wanna make sure. Oh, cool, 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 cool. All righty. So how to acquire your style, you can use this method to anything, like I said, buying a house, buying a car, whatever it may be. You're not gonna know your style right off the bat. I have to express this. I think that I've only really discovered a portion of my style or a big chunk of my style in the last maybe six months. And I've been doing this for, I don't know, the last five to six years. You have to really put in the hours. If you ask Curtis, he will tell you this over and over again. You could see, it's really awesome because I got to see Curtis go through his different styles and uh, he was really into portrait photography. And I think he still does a lot of that stuff on the side for the Oscars. And you can see how he really enjoys like street art and the minimal like lines. Just go, you can literally see it in his work, the progression and where he started to, you know, change like how it is. Nothing has to be permanent. So it's forever changing. All right, how to start a business. So this is very technical. It's just very like, 
specific things that you will like physically need to do in the state of California. It's stuff that I wish I knew at the time. Um, again, I'll, I'll send Curtis a slide to give you guys, but this is very just technical stuff that I wish I knew um, when I was going through the process that you guys are. Um, so you can start a business literally in five steps. It's super easy, whether you want to get your freelance business off or your photography or even your clothing brand, sure. Uh, you need to get a DBA or a FBN. And what that is, is a doing business as or a fictitious business name. Uh, the county usually sees it as a fictitious business name. Uh, it's easy. You can print out your paperwork online. I'm not sure whatever the county website for uh, Los Angeles County is. I'm in San Diego, uh, but I just went to San Diego County, printed out the paperwork, and then I delivered it to the county building. Just want to say that I'm a sole proprietor and it costs around 35 or 40 bucks very cheap. You're just basically telling the government, hey, my name's Alfred Amaro and I'm doing business as Wave Gretzky. This is how I'm going to be operating from here on forward. Cool. Thumbs up. So secondly, you have to publish advertisement. They're like, okay, you want to do business as Wave Gretzky? You have to tell the local newspaper that you want to put out ads for four weeks so that we know you're serious about your business. So they give you a list of all the people you can contact and tell you, <clears throat> These are, these are the local newspapers, contact any one of them. And you can just literally give them your name, give them maybe a picture and they'll do it all for you. That costs about 20 bucks. And then after that, you get your certificate. And once you get your certificate, you take that to Chase or whatever business account you want to open. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, um, whatever it may be. People want you to be official. This is not Venmo. This is not Apple Pay. This is not, you know, any kind of transactions like that. <clears throat> big, company, uh, big companies and corporations, they're not going to, you know, send it to your grandma's account. They want to see that you're an official business. And so you want to make sure that you're treated that way. That can also help you when you want to increase your pay rate. So walk into Chase with your FBN or your DBA. Again, tell them the same thing. I want to file as a sole proprietor, or you might have a partner that you're going in with. This is going to be 15 bucks a month. If you're a current student, you can get a count for free or like less than that um, until you're 26. So it's something to keep that in mind. I just turned 26, so I've officially started paying for my account. Sucks. Um, last, oh no, not last. Sales tax certificate. Um, this can be done on the internet, same day, state of California. Again, you're going to be using your social security number and not an EIN. Your EIN is an employer identification number. And again, you don't need to worry about that because you're a sole proprietor. You're just using your social security number. You want to know maybe if you need one? Well, if you were to buy your item at a store, would they charge tax? Then yeah, if you're selling merch, yeah, you probably need one. If you're selling anything physical or tangible, yeah, definitely. This is easy. It integrates with your online store. Um, I use tax jar. I don't even have to think about it. It just takes the money out automatically and um, pays all my taxes. Don't definitely pay your taxes. Don't get caught not paying your taxes. Um, and last but not least, this is pretty optional. I, I, I wouldn't consider it optional almost, but QuickBooks is very vital to my business. Um, it's important to do this at the foundation of your business because once you really start making money, you're not really going to want to have to go back and rebuild the fundamentals of your business. Um, and it gets tricky. You have your personal finances and you have your business finances. You have money coming in and money coming out. You want to make sure that it's all separate. QuickBooks is super easy on the app. You literally have to like swipe right for your business and swipe left for your personal, uh, every transaction. It's pretty easy. Again, easy for tax time, integrates with all your platforms. It might seem tedious, but get in the habit. I really recommend it, seriously. Um, that's all I got for you guys about how to start a business. Uh, I wanna show you guys like other important things. I know I'm just kind of like spilling so much onto you guys, but I just think that like, it's all information that I wish I had at the current state where you guys are at. I was like really just coming out of the gate and I had no idea what a lot of this stuff meant. Other important things, do you have a portfolio? Yes, sweet, now use it. If not, start working for free to make one. Um, website portfolio is preferred because people are dumb. Uh, people usually have been making like PDF portfolios because they're like, oh, I'll just send it to them in an email. But a lot of the people that you're working with are big companies and they're gonna be like, well, we have VPNs we can't even open your PDF or we're too dumb and we don't know how to access this. So um, your portfolio should perform like a DJ set. And when I say this, I mean that everything should be a hit. It should be hit after hit after hit after hit. 
when I sat down with Lawyer's Title, the real estate title company that I'm at now, um, and they wanted to see video. They're like, show me a video. Boom, here's what it is. All right, show me another one. 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 They wanted to make sure they knew exactly who they were bringing on to help their company. And so that's just kind of how it should go. It, some people try and get away with like one or two things. You really just have to narrow it down. And instead of doing like video, photo, web, and all this other stuff, maybe you just narrow it down a little bit. It's a little bit easier said than done. But yeah, not to say that you shouldn't post all that other stuff in your portfolio as well. How to freelance. Um, so this is actually a pretty simple answer. Uh, photo time slots on IG stories. You'd be so surprised how supportive your friends and your family are on Instagram and Facebook and all these other uh, social medias. But you literally just have to say, hey guys, next week I'm available on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Here are the time slots I have. Uh, if you guys want to take some photos, if you guys need your logo done, if you guys need any kind of web help, I'm here to help you guys. People will jump on it. You'd be super surprised. And because uh, people are always trying to start their business. Um, Walk into your local businesses, network in person. Walking into a business is way more beneficial than you sending out 100 cold emails to 100 businesses because they have no idea who you are. And even if you just drop off your business card and they're still not ready for services, they still might refer you to somebody else because word of mouth is my greatest referral to this day. I promise you, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, People that are always looking for work, real estate agents, local restaurants. These are very small, not chain restaurants. These are like your little abuelitas that are cooking up in the kitchen. Go ask them if they need help with their menus, with their menu photography, any kind of food. Uh, barbers, small local businesses. I emphasize small, no chains. And people who don't have marketing. People want marketing. They just don't have the resources for it. And they don't either have the time because they're too busy running their business. So, yeah. Uh, again, more information. My, fa my favorite websites to use are Shopify and Squarespace. You can have WordPress. You can have all these other sites. Uh, these are just the two I prefer. They're the, like, I don't know. I've used them all. Uh, maybe Curtis can attest to this a little bit or maybe recommend something even better than maybe I don't even know. But for merchandise, Shopify, uh, for merchandise now, I use Squarespace as well just because it integrates with a lot of the payment processing that I use. And they both integrate with Printful and MailChimp. And what these are, these are print on demands. Again, I know I'm giving you guys like a lot of random information, but just like this is all good information that it's, if you know it, then it's a little bit, you could pass it on or use it. Say you wanna make t-shirts, but you don't know how to screen print, you don't know any screen printers, and you don't have the money to put up $400 for 50 shirts. Well, you can use Printful or other kind of integrated apps that print on demand. And basically what that is, is you're sending them your design and you're putting it on your website. And when your friend orders it, you don't have to see the shirt. You don't have to see it being made. It sends it to them automatically. And basically you have lower profit margins, but the difference is you're not putting the upfront money to begin with. So if you're selling a t-shirt for $25 and it takes them $16 to make, you still make $9. And to me, that's like, that sounds pretty good to me because you're still getting a new customer and you're getting your brand out there. Again, this can work for anything, photos, canvases, even if you wanna print out your stuff. Email is gold, you don't even know it. Email keeps you relevant, keeps your name in their inbox. Email marketing is super, super, super important. When I send about 20 emails out, if I send it to 20 different people, eight people will open it by the end of the day and 16 people will have opened it by the end of the week. So that's some good data for you. People are, it's a very good connection. Even if they don't use you now, they might again, recommend you to somebody else. They're like, hey, I know a graphic designer. I know a guy that sells merch, whatever. And even when you do make, maybe make a design that they like, maybe they'll buy, keeps you relevant. And that's pretty much the end of my spiel and my shameless plug. This is my YouTube channel and a QR code. So if you guys are so generous, you guys could definitely subscribe if you'd like. And that's pretty much the end of my presentation. That's all I got for you guys. Any <laughs> questions? That's all you got. That's a lot. Nice job, Alfred. No, I know. I know I kind of overwhelmed you guys and I came in like super strong with a lot of information. They're used um, to that, dude. They're used to that. I'm coming in hot every every Tuesday. So Right, right. <laughs> You're but, okay. Uh, cool. I hope I, I seriously hope this like kind of benefited you guys and you guys took at least one thing away that you might have not known or you know. That you yeah. Could Who's got let, let's open it up to some questions. Who's got questions for Alfred? Now's a great time. Again, 
you know, this is an opportunity for you guys to pick someone's brain who's been exactly where you are. Um, you know, and Alfred, you know, I say this all the time too, and Alfred probably remembers this, you know, this kind of goes back to his um, comment about, you know, kind of just doing things a lot, right? And, yep. you know, I, you know, I say this all the time, you know, as, cre as creative as I've been in my life, right? And, and I've lived a life in, in the creative world for the last, I don't know, since I was, really since I was 17, but professionally since I was about 23, 24, it, anybody can learn how to be creative. Anybody can learn how to, um, to do this stuff, to uh, be creative and, and kind of start your own business and all that stuff. But the big thing is doing it over and over and over again. That consistency that Alfred's talking about, I cannot emphasize that enough. It's probably the biggest thing in my life where I've seen this. Yeah, where people succeed or fail, it's because they don't put the continuous effort into it. And it doesn't even matter what you're doing. If you want to learn how to cook, well, you know, cooking once a week is you're not going to learn how to cook right? Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. like, exactly. you want to learn how to make a t-shirt business, doing it once a month or once every couple of weeks isn't going to do it. You got to throw yourself into it and do something every, doesn't mean you have to sell a shirt every day or sell a design every day. It means you have to do something towards that goal every day. Um, so who's got some questions for, for Alfred? Hey, Professor, this is Florin. You know, I always have questions. Yeah, well, go ahead. <laughs> you know me? Yeah. I actually have two questions for you, Alfred. Sure. Uh, but first of all, thank you so much for this presentation. Um, it's it's very encouraging and, and it, it, it just, it all sounds great. So hopefully yeah. we'll get there somewhere. Yeah, I'm super glad. <laughs> so my first question is in regards to licensing. So I saw in one of the shirts for your nephew, I believe it was, that you had Bart Simpson on yeah. it. So, so do you do licensing with this so i don't um and for that reason i i thought about not putting that in this presentation but uh, just because i was like selling it um i ended up selling quite a bit of it but uh yeah if you so you can rip things up to 70 percent. and with the bart simpson one i had adjusted the font um i i went ahead and made a decision that i changed it at least uh 40 to 50 percent in my head and uh, i took the risk so you could take risks like that and the worst that can happen to you is that you can get a cease and desist. And I don't want you guys to like go down this route or anything like that. I've received a cease and desist before. And uh, again, nothing happens. It's just like a little slap on the wrist saying, hey, you can't sell this anymore. If we find out you're selling it, we're going to stop you. But I didn't continue to sell that product, the Bart Simpson merch. Um, I just sold like, I think 70 or 80. And then uh, it, it never saw the light again. But uh, this is something I wanted to do. Uh, that was just kind of like the risk I took. Yeah, you've done that before because I remember you had, did you have a BMW? You had something? Yeah. 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 I, I remember asking yeah. you about it too. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a, for the BMW one he's talking about, I had a hat where I kind of like flipped the, uh, the M Performance logo. Again, I took the initiative that I changed it over 70%. I used their colors, but it is what it is. You. Uh, yeah, it happens a lot. And, and again, we're going to have a wider discussion about this. I, I keep plug in this, but we are going to have a, a talk about copyright in this class. So yep. that's one of our lectures coming up and, and um, some of these licensing things. Here's the key can right I here. Can I say one more thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I work for a real estate agent company. I do not mess around with um, copyright for them. Whenever I, I have them subscribe to Epidemic Sound, so they have royalty-free music. I have them subscribe to Motion Array, which is uh, stock footage and graphics. So they're covered on every step of the way. And also to my YouTube channel is covered every step of the way. Um, I, I really don't mess around with copyright. I know it seems like it just because of that design, but uh, the cop, the, uh, the, I should say consequences for copyright in video and music is far more um, aggressive than for merchandise. Um, at least if you're pushing a, a little bit amount of merchandise. So um, that's yeah. just kind of the risk. I take. Listen, if you're selling 70, 80, even a thousand units, you might get away. That, you know, they're not going to care. Disney always cares. Don't ever rip Disney off. Yeah, don't ever rip Disney uh, off. And now that Disney owns so many other titles, all Star yep. Wars related things, yep. man, you do Baby Yoda, you're going to get a cease and desist yep. if you sell 10. 
So just be aware. It's yeah. uh, unless you change Baby Yoda to like purple, but even then, they it's hard. Disney's very very powerful. They can they can definitely pull the rug out from under you. But yeah. Alfred's right. Mm -hmm. um, photography, music, video. You can't violate copyright with that. That's big. That's a bigger issue than merchandise is. Uh, there's so much merchandise that flies under the radar. It's so hard to, to, to you know, kind of capture all of that. And so much of merchant style, you know, so many, uh, you know, kind of, uh, right. so much of style is about kind of uh, co-opting and ripping. And, yep. and it's kind of almost like DJing and whatever. Yeah. Where that is an accepted practice with cool uh, lines, right? right? Yep. So, you know. You guys see it like you're in the heart of, of uh, LA County. I mean, you guys see, you go to downtown LA, you see a whole bunch of shirts that emulate the Starbucks logo or I mean the McDonald's mm -hmm. logo or whatever it may be. And <clears throat> those shops do get shut down every once in a while. You, you see like raids on online. Uh, it's just about how consistently and how often you do it. Yeah. <clears throat> Brian, you were asking, uh, so would using those while editing on Premiere Pro considered copyright? What do you mean using what? Brian, let's see. You have that question there. Um, uh, don't they have music? Oh, music. Oh, on Premiere Pro. Um, <clears> yeah, <throat> they, have, sure. they have stock music that you can get through Adobe. Adobe. Yeah. Um, and they give you the they give you what you can do with that stock stock music, right? If you you can use yeah. it. For, sometimes you can use stock for um, non uh, commercial usage. Yeah. So like. For me, on my YouTube tutorials, I, I use copyright, um, uh, uh, you know, oh, I use creative free. commons for my oh. music, for nice. my backgrounds, for my tutorials, because I'm not making money on my video tutorials. It's a conflict of interest for me to chart, to, to uh, put ads on my, you, you guys know if I, look, there'll be nothing worse than watching <laughs> one of my 40 minute videos and there'll be nine ads mm -hmm. going through. It's already a lot to like do that, but um <laughs> So if I was charging, you know, if I was making money on my YouTube videos, uh, I certainly could not be using uh, commercial music that I that I don't that I didn't get copyright for. Yep. So YouTube has great um, commercial uh, usage and non-commercial usage, and and they give you the terms, right? Yep. And same thing with Adobe with fonts. Uh, fonts even have copyright issues, and we're gonna. Yeah talk more about that but uh, so typography and fonts and photos and video yeah. yeah adobe's trying to sell you stock stuff yeah right so they yeah have if i could piggyback on that as well i think it's a little bit uh you you know i mean the music on adobe and even like the youtube library it might sound a little bit like corporate -y or plain or things like that i mean but it's better to be safe than to be caught up in the the rcaa i think what is it called the r rca or rcaa yeah. whatever like the music label industry is like they're coming after twitch streamers right now people are getting you know fine thousands of dollars it's like a very huge thing youtubers are getting fined thousands yeah. and thousands of dollars for putting drake into their videos so yeah dmca and then BMI. yeah dmca um so yeah so it's you know that's a that's a good conversation can i ask so why did you decide to leave la county and go down to san diego what what was that move for i never even asked you that why you right, right. i know you've been there for a while yeah yeah, I, I think in my, even in my last semester, I'd already made the move. And then I was like almost bailing on a lot of classes. I was like, Curtis, man, I'm trying to like get yeah. over here. Yeah. Um, I'm good for it. But uh, I think I just, I don't know. Uh, I really liked it here. And I, I just like the less traffic. And I love, I love LA. Like I wanted to explore all of Southern California before I started moving. Um, that's kind of like how I operate. Like I want to see the world, right? And I was like, okay, I want to discover everything in Southern California. So I started doing missions to San Francisco and San Diego and all these other places. And I really liked it in San Diego. So I decided to reside here, at least for now. And then when I feel like I discovered Southern California, I went and traveled like to different states, Nevada. And I did like, you know, a cross country thing. And it was super fun. But I just yeah, I want to explore California. Do you feel like that San Diego allows you to have kind of an opportunity that maybe it would be like, sure. I, I know that sometimes that that's helpful for, for people when they're starting their own businesses is, you know, San Diego is a lot smaller than the LA area. Yep. So well, maybe there's more opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to take what I know from Los Angeles County. There's a lot of competition here already. Not to say that you can't stand out or to still do what you want to do. 
but I was like, I'm going to take this exactly and just move it to a different County. And I was like light years ahead of people when I was doing like real estate videos, like real estate agents are like thirsty. You can always get freelance work from real estate agents. They always need somebody. And uh, there's a little bit more, there's a couple more companies out here in San Diego now, but yeah, still not, still not like San Diego County or uh, Los Angeles County. So it's kind of the big fish or little pond thing instead yeah. of the around, which is kind of helpful. Who else has got a question for so, Alfred? Let me can I throw something in here. One more yep. thing. Uh, again, a lot of information here. Uh, again, like I said, real estate agents are, they have always the most work for you. You can go through title reps. So you can go, so San Diego realtors are always posting like, oh, I'm an SD realtor, hashtag SD realtor on Instagram. This is how you find them. You literally go to those hashtags and you're like, I'm looking for you, but you're thinking you're, you're like, you think you're looking for, for clients. Like this is how people find you. And so that's just how I found a lot of my like real estate agents, title reps is go through Instagram hashtags. Like they think that people that are ready to buy a house, they think that they're going to Instagram and saying the hashtag LA realtor. It's, that's not, not the case, but they think it is. That's funny. So you, so you're going and you're go back to that kind of hunting down businesses. So give us a typical kind of thing that you'll do. Uh, you gave, you gave some scenarios on, on a kind of a basic level. Sure. What are the, what are some of the things you do? If you're going to reach out to a company, what are some of the strategies maybe that you would do? Yeah. So, um, if it's a real estate, if it's a real estate company, I'll tell them, Hey, these are kind of the house tours I do. I do it on a very, very, minimal level i i don't like to overwhelm them so i'd be like if you guys need headshots if you guys need house tours i can do that i can be that guy and sure enough i start out very simplistic they call me in um, i go to the house that day i film it and i flip it within a day i never ever give my freelance work like two days or later same thing goes with car dealerships i'll walk into a car dealership and i'll be like hey i want to take some photos of a car i'll literally take my laptop with me and i'll sit down in their like offices and i'll edit the photos like the same day and i'll literally hand it over on a thumb drive keep it keep the thumb drive if you guys want or you know rip it off and uh, just so they know that i'm serious and the next time i come in there to the car dealership i can charge like 400 dollars, and that's 400 dollars that'll buy me like gas food and like a portion of my rent that week. So. Camera gear, what more, <laughs> more, more tech stuff. More tech stuff, you know, just put it on the credit card, do it. No, I'm just kidding. But um, what, camera gear what, is expensive. So, and then when you're following up with companies, so let's say you, you kind of make a, um, you kind of sell yourself to a real estate company doing video or doing, let's say graphics or doing headshots or whatever it may be. Then that you do something for them once, and then how are you following up with them? What are you doing? Are you doing like an email check-in with them? What are you doing? Yeah, so um, sometimes I do email. Uh, I don't email. The only thing I do email drips on is like my personal like brand, uh, the Wave Gretzky Show. And when I sell merch, people will get updated uh, when new merch comes out. That's when I use email drips. But as far as real estate agents, there's this thing called the MLS. And the, uh, I forget what it stands for, but real estate agents, when they go live with a listing, they have to post, um, hey, this listing just went live and it has to show within a 24 hour span. So I know that they just got a listing. So they're looking to sell this thing. <clears throat> and I'm like, hey, I know you need a house walkthrough. Uh, let's get it on. Like you already have it on the market. You want to sell this thing quick? Like, let me do a video. And they're like, okay, get in here because they're desperate and they really want to sell the house as quick as possible. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Who's got some, who's... I'm not trying to just like poop all over them, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's easier than a lot of people think. Yeah. Yeah. Who's got some questions, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, you had your hand up a while ago. Sorry, Chris. And then Ernesto, I see the hands up now. Chris. No, no, it's okay. Uh, good morning, Alfred. What's going on, Chris? Hey, how you doing, buddy? Doing all right. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate that. A lot that. of great information. Thank you. Thank and you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Appreciate and that. you mentioned um, you've been doing this for a while, but you mentioned like uh, six months ago, you just discovered your style of design and more of a minimalist, simplistic. That, that I'm still struggling from time. The time trying to define what my style is. Sure. Which I just discovered last semester that I'm more like you, that I'm more in the minimal 
simplistic design, which I'm not into fancy, flashy, right, right, congested. You know, it's so. How do you? What was your process? How did you define or discover <clears throat> that was your style? Sure. Um, almost kind of the, I used like the same way that I told you guys about like the five things I looked at literally five different artists. I was like, okay, I like this person because of the colors they use. They don't use more than two or three. I like this person because, uh, it's clean. If you go back, um, am I still showing my PowerPoint? Yeah. yeah. Let's go back. If you look at my logos, oh, whoops. um they all have a defined line like um they don't have gradients i don't use a lot of gradients uh every start has a stop um that's like an illustrator thing i knew that i wanted to to have like okay like because when i was doing logo design i was like if you can't stitch it on a hat then it's almost like impossible to do you see logos with like gradients and like not finished lines every line has to connect because if you can't embroider it on a t-shirt it might not be a good logo and that's kind of the rule of thumb that I use again just picking like five different people uh, yeah I mean just looking around I think and, is uh, sorry I forgot do I have one more question do you ever struggle with being creative or where do you find inspiration from sure um yeah i think that everybody kind of goes through those waves for sure and uh i will say this like don't try and beat yourself up there was times where i'm like man i'm not creative so therefore like i'm out of the game like it's not i'm i'm i should just quit while i'm ahead because this is how uncreative i'm feeling <laughs> Um, but a lot of those things are temporary. I think that I do a great job of, I don't know, getting over that stuff by experiencing mm-hmm. things. I like to um, go to the beach. I like to like rent, like, even if it's like a cheap Airbnb house for like 100 and 200 bucks a night, like me and my girlfriend will go um, just to get out of the house mm-hmm. um, or just getting in my truck and like, we'll literally drive um, to Santa Barbara or, you know, um, yeah, creative, creative blocks are hard to get over sometimes, but, uh, it will, the, the, but you have to practice it. I have a whiteboard literally right here and I literally will come up here maybe two times a week for one hour and I'll write down ideas and I can feel the gears turning. It's like a muscle and you have to exercise that muscle. Right. And I'm like, okay, these are all great YouTube videos idea. Boom. I'll write like 10, 20. And then I circle like the best five and then I'll start to erase like the worst ones. I'm like, okay, you just have to, and like, envision like what has the best ROI um I don't know it's kind of it's kind of the process you have to exercise your brain like I'll literally come up here for an hour and like think and it's okay like if I don't come up with anything like I don't beat myself up anymore I used to but awesome that's probably like a long explanation no that's good that's great that's a great question Chris um and I think that happens with a lot of students too is that you know you're you're creating um you know, you're, you're doing assignments for classes and sometimes it doesn't feel like it's your own thing. And, you know, so then it can kind of get a little, so then that's a little easy, but then when you get done with assignments for classes and you got to do your own thing, sometimes it's hard for students to be like, wait a minute, now I got to come up with these ideas, right? Curtis was giving me the ideas. John Measures, you know, like Claudia Ramirez was giving me the ideas, but now I got to come up with them. And so one of the main things that we, you know, we want to do at Mission is make sure you guys have the, the toolkit to like, be to be storytellers and i love look something as simple as as doing the whiteboard alfred i do a similar thing but i do it on my ipad and with my you know and i i feel like writing it down and not typing it is better too for some reason i I feel like and i'll always do that i'll have a running list of just all the crap that i can dump out of my brain yep that's either you know whether it's school stuff or creative stuff you know whether it's work things or whether it's freelance stuff or whether it's my fine art stuff right i'll have a running list of just kind of these are the projects that i kind of want to do or the things i'm thinking about and i like that some of them don't make the cut some of them might just yeah. oh yeah i never did that 
<laughs> you know, it's fine. Because if you just don't do it, then you realize that, well, that was something you weren't that excited about. But sure. I love the idea of the whiteboard idea. You could, you know, you guys could, you may not have a whiteboard up in your house, but I love that idea. Doing that in some way, maybe in a sketchbook where you right. just like at the, you know, just take two full pages of a sketchbook and just start, you know, kind of dumping stuff. Yeah. And you see what sticks after a while when you get, so when you get stuck, uh, you can kind of go to one of those things, maybe go, Oh, let me try this. I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that, but let me try this. Right. When I, whenever I get stuck, you know, I go to the thing that I don't do very often. So I'm always taking photos. I'm always doing video. I'm always doing sound. I'm always, I'm always creating, you know, kind of, uh, but there, but, you know, I have a love for drawing and I don't do it as enough. I love drawing and it's so meditative and I just don't, you know, sometimes it takes hours to do a drawing. And so whenever I get, whenever I'm like super bored or I don't have anything to do or I'm stuck, I'll just say, okay, I'm going to do a drawing and not, and nobody ever has to even see this thing. Right. right. It doesn't have to ever go anywhere, but it at least gets you, it gets those gears turning. I think like Alfred is saying is that, you know, uh, it sometimes doesn't matter what you're doing. You just have to exercise your the you muscle, know, the muscle, the brain, yeah. the creativity, and it could be a mindless thing. I'll just be doing, you know, I'll just do drawings uh, on the iPad and procreate or even on pencil and paper. And I right. ended up, it was funny because, you know, you guys know me as a photographer. My fine art work is photography. Uh, my commercial work is photography for the most part, although I do a lot of design too. But it was funny because the gallery I show with, I 99.9% .9 of the time I show photography. But there was a show coming up in Mexico City, a show happened in Mexico City last year. And we got invited to do with the gallery, got invited for all of us to have a pe one piece in it. And one of the, one of my friends in the, in the, uh, that I show with in the gallery was like, you know, he goes, dude, you should do a drawing for this show. I'm like, what? No one knows me. Do Why would I do that? He's like, well, I know you do drawings. I'm like, and this was like three months before the show. And I was like, ah. it just kept sitting in the back of my mind of like, you know what, maybe I will do a drawing. So I ended up doing a drawing. It took me like 18 hours to do this pencil drawing, like giant pencil drawing right. on paper. And it was in the, people loved it in the show. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, yeah, you'd be surprised. And be surprised. it was just something that, you know, because I, I still have this love for it, but I don't ever do it very much. But then I broke out of my, it gave me some ideas to do one for a piece. And I did this super minimalist, beautiful drawing that I love. Um, so sometimes you have to do something that you're not comfortable with. Uh, sometimes you have to do something sure. that you, you know, that just, you know, like, hey, let me just do some, you know, funky Photoshop stuff that doesn't matter, right? right. Yeah. And, and um, can, yeah. let me piggyback off what you were saying really quick. I know we're kind of wrapping it up here soon. Um, you know, I'm not good at drawing. Like I remember sitting in the class where you guys are at right now and I would have classmates that were like advanced drawers and illustrator and like on the Wacom tablet to this day I couldn't draw a perfect circle or like a straight line I'm a graphic designer and you could see it here but like if you gave me pen and paper I think every single one of you guys would outscore me um, it's just figuring out what works for you. Um, you just because you're not good at drawing doesn't mean you can't be a graphic designer like look at me like I'm a prime example of it um, I know that was like kind of a big one for me when I was sitting there yeah, yeah. People get like, you can't, you, you sometimes can't compare yourself to what other people do because yeah. everybody starts off at different places and is di at different levels. So you have to kind of, um, you have to kind of figure out what your strengths are. And that takes time. And that's a different right. thing, than the style thing that we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway. Who else has got, yeah, we are gonna wrap it up here. Uh, and then I do wanna chat with a couple of the people that maybe don't have their Wacoms. And then I'm gonna chat with Michelle and Chris after class. Um, so who's got one or two last questions for Alfred? And Alfred, if you wanna stop sharing your screen up there, that'd be good. We lost you on video. Gotcha. Stop yeah, uh, my camera just died out right now. Oh, so. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop sharing. Switch. Switch. Who's got another question? Uh, we got Ernesto had his hand raised. Ernesto, what was your question? Alfred, just want to say a uh, great presentation. 
Oh, and dude, my, thanks. First, my first question is, how do you get that? How do you get that confidence boost to like put out your stuff? Um, you know what? I have this conversation with my girlfriend pretty often. She's like, dude, you have um, a lot of courage. Uh, I don't know, man. I I think I I've just been doing it so much, like repetition. Uh, every single week I put out a video, so it helps again exercising that muscle. I think that you'd be surprised. It's because everybody's always thinking about themselves and nobody's ever really thinking about what the other person is doing. If that makes sense. Um, so they're looking at you like, dang, Ernesto's being super creative, like putting out merch and I mean, that's cool. That's cool. And they might not support right away. And, but it's like the more consistently you do, it's like, dang, that guy's like people, like old people that I went to college with, they're seeing me and they're like, oh, like you're still making t-shirts. And I'm like, yeah, like sometimes I still make t-shirts. Yeah. I was just like on a different, you know, kind of thing, but I, I think it's just repetition and practice. Like, I don't know, talking to the camera over and over or, you know, just physically putting out your stuff. I don't ask, I, <laughs> this might sound like a little like cocky. I, it's not supposed to come off cocky, but I don't ask people's opinions on my merchandise, but I will ask my like three closest friends because they're super um you know they like streetwear and they they like a lot of the same brands that i like so i know that their like kind of wavelength is on the same as mine though and i have a grading system i have two different grading systems i either have zero or one is this a one or a zero and it's basically is it a hit or a miss and it's a miss mm -hmm. right so if it's a miss it goes back to the drawing board right then we have a, another grading system that's zero to ten like okay where is this like oh it's a seven if it's not if it's not a, an 8.5 or like or better I, I don't even bother putting it out I scrap videos consistently and I scrap merchandise consistently which is probably not the best thing but um I think yeah you don't I don't feel bad anymore for scrapping stuff I used to always feel bad like dang I just wasted two four hours on this like t-shirt and I'm just scrapping it like don't feel bad just scrap it uh yeah. and another question that I had is like What's your thought process like when you're making a video for like a real estate person, like you're doing like a walkthrough, like what's your thought? Like what's like, how do you think like, oh, this is going to be first, this is going to be second, kind of like, you know, like the storyboard in like your head. Right, right. Uh, so I have like a shot list in my head that you always want to see. Real estate's a little bit easier. It's like you just got to hug the corners. Um, <clears throat> that's basically what it is. And you got to get the widest angle possible. I use a 17 to 28. Um millimeter lens and uh yeah hug every corner that you can get into and just get more footage and if you end up not using that footage or those pictures you don't have to um, the mls that they post their their listing to only carries 25 to 27 photos so that's all you have to worry about and that's pretty easy to knock off like you know you have front front yard backyard master bedrooms and it's like you can get you know three of each and bathrooms and you'll be good okay. uh yeah preparation man preparation is like the biggest thing you can do all yeah. right. Thank you very much. And yeah, all, no problem, man. Always wa uh, watching other people's uh, real estate videos. If that's something you want to get into, it's it's easy. It's easy. Right. You know, and then, you know, some people I see they'll fly drones through places now and above, yep. beyond, you know, whatever. Anthony's got a question. I think that's going to be our last question. We're going to let Alfred uh, jam out of here. Um, Anthony, what's your question? Uh, first, I wanted to say uh, thanks for the presentation. Yeah. No problem. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, since you've been doing this for a long time, um, is do people only want like is graphic design only useful for making logos? Like, is that like just the main uh, focus of people want? I guess is what I'm trying to ask. I think the reason like I emphasize that most is because people talk about doing things and then they like really don't fall through with them. They're like, oh, I want to start a clothing brand. And so I'm like, I got you. I'll make you a logo. And they, I make the logo and then like they don't do anything with it. So that's always just like the first step they get to. But it's not to say that graphic design, like I've redone menus like for restaurants. Yeah, <clears throat> no, yeah, yeah. Business but, cards. Um, like, I don't know. It's because like I've like I, i've made logos before for high school like i've designed clothing i also designed a menu for a, a friend's Wait. brother's restaurant yeah um but what i'm saying is like for me when i make something you know, with photoshop or something uh the way i like doing it is i just like manipulating photos and not like in the sense of like changing the brightness or stuff mm -hmm. like that like making it look surreal like something different like uh i don't know how else to describe it but I'm what I'm trying to ask is like, is there a place for that, or is it just going to be logos in the 
uh, the business. Mm. Yeah. I think there's a place for anything. I think you just got to find, you just got to figure out where you can land. Yeah. So Anthony, that's a question that we can talk about as this class keeps going on and uh, this semester, because you're talking about image manipulation and, and um, compositing and certainly advertising has a ton of that, right? Yeah. It, it's advertising is, you know, there's, there's, yep so much of it and i will be showing you guys many many examples throughout the semester of on artist profiles where you'll see image compositing uh yeah you like to you know you like to manipulate images um and uh you know it's uh it's a um yeah it's, yeah it, there's a lot out there it's it's maybe not as big uh as you know, graphic design is is an umbrella term, right? But you might want to think about being uh, thinking of yourself as a as a compositor or uh, a concept artist or an illustrator. We we may have discussions about what some of those kind of jobs are. Um, there's yeah. graphic design may not be the right term. That's the umbrella term, and then there's these other things within graphic design that that um, might get you in the place that you want to get to. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get in where you fit in. It's, well, you know, it's yeah. tricky. Yeah, it's a you, process. You you carve your you you carve your your little kind of piece of the pie out. Your niche, right? Yeah. That's what you're gonna do. So if you really love that and you're good at it, uh, there are. Look, I mean, every single game company in the world has 10, 20, I mean, the big game companies have ten or twenty composite artists. That's all they do all day long is composite Photoshop imagery together. Some of them are illustrators and, and they draw the whole thing out. And some of them are doing kind of a combo of things. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we have, we're not able to do this right now because the pandemic, but you know, we do tours of Blizzard and some of the you know, gaming companies uh, you know, here and there. Uh, a couple of years ago, I went to Blizzard. Alfred, did you go to Blizzard when we went? No, I didn't go. I was, just, uh, I, was yeah. I was working a lot when I was in college, and I wish yeah. I hadn't worked so much. It did over? I might have overlapped. I mean, unfortunately, you didn't. You didn't get to experience a new building as a no, student. I like saw the before. photos and stuff, though. Yeah. So, yeah. and well, and you went. You you've been to the building. I mean, since oh, yeah, yeah. graduated. But yeah. Um, the uh, when we went through Blizzard, we talked to. We stopped at one guy's. Um, so uh, one guy's kind of station i can't call it a cubicle because a blizzard all the artists are in this big open area it's pretty rad and this one guy we stopped at his his desk area and it's big right. and he basically said yeah i work in photoshop and illustrator all day long all i do is composite images together and the guy gets paid like 70 dollars an hour Jeez. So, and he just basically standing desk, he's got his tat, he's, he has a Cintiq, so he's drawing right on the surface of the computer, but he showed uh, examples of, of image compositing that he was doing for games for, so that what the concept artists do are they're planning out what the game is going to look like, what the worlds are going to look like, what right. gonna look. and he would start everything out in Photoshop with imagery, and then he would you know pitch that, and then because he's not going to do a, a, a eighty hour drawing or right. digital painting until he has kind of fleshed out through digital imagery mm -hmm. what he wants to do. So so Anthony, great question, and I will show you more examples of those kinds of artists. Um, yeah, we had talked a little, someone had brought up like storyboards. When I do write treatments, like for massage science, I had like really, really recently, I had a commercial idea, f idea for them um, because of the whole COVID thing, they were reopening. So I was like, okay, this is like a perfect thing to like put some ad dollars behind and uh, really get their name out there. Um, so I literally went into Photoshop. I was like, okay, uh, this is what I have in mind. Uh, this is how many people I'm going to need. I'm going to need one massage room. And I put in pictures from the internet to like make what I had in my mind. Um, just like really quickly, I had my mind uh, in my mind was um, someone getting a massage. It's like the screen is split in half, someone getting a massage up here, but down here, like the person's working at their desk. And it was like, you're back to work and so are we. And uh, again, like if you can display that on paper and show it to the clients and do it well and explain it with your words and visuals as well, um, usually it'll land like 100% of the time. Yeah, cool. Storyboards work for sure. Yeah. Could I say something? Yes, Chris. Alfred, um, it's very inspiring, very motivating to actually talk with someone, to hear their experience, 
the process from someone that graduated from mission yeah. is out there doing it. Yeah. So I applaud you. Well, thank you, Chris. Props. Appreciate Mad that. Respects. Seriously. <laughs> I really do appreciate that guys. And, and guys, like I was literally in the same seat as you guys were like four or five years ago. It's, I, I always wanted to come back and make sure I did to help out classes and talk to different classes because a lot of the people, sometimes you talk to, they're, they're super far along in their process. Like, dude, like you're light years ahead. Like I almost can't compare because you're, you're nowhere near me, but like, guys, I'm, I'm right there with you. You're, you're, it's like, there's, there's, it's just practice and takes time and it's just repetition. Yeah. Hey, you're awesome, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, on that note, thank you, Chris. On that note, Alfred, I want to thank you for uh, coming in and talking to the class. Awesome. Um, I, I think you probably inspired some students and you probably get hit up on, on various, you know, yeah. My uh, Instagram and, yeah. and Twitter is all the same as my YouTube channel. So if you guys have any questions or you get, you want to I haven't watched your new YouTube desk setup situation. Uh, I'm going to have to watch that video. I'm, yeah, all, yeah. I'm obsessed with other people's. You should see mine, man. I have a control. I got, you know, it's, Dude, send me a picture. I want yeah, to see. Yeah. yeah, I'll send you a picture. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be making a YouTube video. I'll let you. Right, do that. Right. I've got, you know, I got a whole setup uh, for when I'm doing my stuff. But and I want to, I want to jump in one more thing. I know we're doing this so long. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. Curtis, like, can see your guys's like effort and potential, and he sees like how hard you guys work. He may not say it all the time, but he knows every single one of you guys very extremely well. And he could see if you're distracted, he could see exactly what path you're on. And he has uh, an infinite amount of resource. Ask Curtis, like I bugged him through text message and through Facebook messenger and <laughs> through Instagram DMs for, for years. Like, and, and uh, I, I really appreciate, I think Curtis has been one of my biggest mentors um, in the whole process. And he, he might seem like a cold shoulder sometimes, but uh, <laughs> I think that like, he has like the purest intentions and that guy like, he he uh, he knows how to get people going in the right Thanks direction. Ever. My my cold shoulder is only because I always have hundreds of people doing that same sure, thing. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. So, so I can't sense. always juggle everybody with equal yep. weight. Uh, yeah. But I I definitely appreciate all the hard work. You know, I love the questions. I love people. You know, I mean that's what I'm here for. Uh, you know, you guys are. You guys are the next generation of creators. I'm not doing my job if I'm not getting you guys out there making stuff, right? If I'm not getting you guys out there making money and doing what you love to do, it's what I was, I mean, look, I can't complain in my life. I get to do what I love to do every day. And I want you guys to be able to do that too. And so, you know, I don't mind people doing that. And I think Alfred sees that and he likes, I think he's kind of paying it forward now as well. Because see how important that is. Right? Yeah. So, important always pay it forward yeah so. all right alfred thank you so much i really appreciate it right awesome on, guys